tired of the same old thing Tradition wearing out your name I'm tired of a man-made worship hour I'm tired I'm tired of songs that have no praise We're worshiping you just seems out of place I'm tired of religious formalities I'm tired Send the rain power I'm tired and I'm tired of songs that have no praise we're worshiping you just seems out of place I'm tired of religious formalities I'm tired Lord won't you send the rain we need the rain oh Lord, Lord send your fire we need the fire send the rain Send your Holy Ghost and power. Send the rain. We need the rain. Oh Lord, send your fire. We need the fire. Send the rain. We need the wind, Lord. Send your Holy Ghost and power. Lord, send the rain. We need the rain. Oh Lord, send your fire. We need the fire. send the wind. We need the wind, Lord. Send your Holy Ghost and fire, and we're ready for revival, Lord. We're ready to walk through that door. We're ready, oh Lord, let it pour. We're ready, yes. We're ready, Lord, enough is enough. We're ready 
to drink from your cup. We're ready, oh Lord, fill us up. We're ready. Send the rain. We need the rain, Lord. Lord send your fire. We need the fire. Send the wind. We need the wind, Lord. Oh Lord, send, send your, your Holy Ghost in power. Send the rain. We need the rain, Lord. Lord. Send your fire. We need the fire. Send the wind. We need the wind, Lord. Send your Holy Ghost in power. Hallelujah. So that's your desire tonight, this first night of camp meeting. I'm ready to walk through that door of revival. How about you? I believe we walked through it this morning. Pastor Brian preached a wonderful message today. And that message, he said, I'll holler if I have to, to cry out to the Lord. Jeremiah spoke of that. We've been sharing that throughout this month leading up to camp meeting about the importance of prayer. How the Lord said, if we call upon Him, He would answer. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face, and pray. As Pastor was getting into his message this morning, I did what you should never do when a preacher was preaching. I started flipping through my Bible. There was a scripture that I wanted to find, and I wanted to open up with it tonight. It was just burned in my heart as he began to lay out his foundation. It's found in Romans chapter 8, verse number 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the Creator was made subject to vanity, but willingly, but by reason of Him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. 19 again says, For the earnest expectation of the Creator waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do we have that earnest expectation? We have that earnest desire to tap in to the Holy of Holies. As we enter into this place tonight, Brother and Sister Thornton's already brought us across that threshold to step into that door of revival. And if that's you tonight and you say, I'm not here to be seen. I'm not here to see somebody else. But I am here to see the King of glory to come down in the midst of His people. And I need the Holy Ghost to have His way in my life. If that's you, don't throw one hand in the air, but throw both hands in the air and say here I am Lord pour out revival on me Father here I am in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and declare unto you O oh God that I am ready I'm ready to walk through the door of revival I'm ready for whatever you have for us this week God I'm ready for the manifestation of your presence I have great expectation of what you want to do in our midst pull down strongholds break down barriers, uh, set in liberty captivity, uh, drive back every hindering force of the enemy, uh, set in liberty those that are in captivity, God, uh, redeemed by your almighty hand of power, uh, save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, uh, heal the sick, uh, redeemed by your almighty hand, uh, oh, I'm ready, Lord, uh, I'm ready, Lord, uh, I'm ready, Lord, uh, oh, upon us once again in this place. Oh, Lamb of God, we believe for a manifestation of the presence of God in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we keep that heart of worship, brother? Can you sing a little bit more of that tonight? Just begin to worship Him. Think about that verse as I'm ready to step through that door. And we're ready for revival, Lord. We're ready to walk through that door. We're ready, oh Lord, let it pour. We're ready, yes. We're ready, Lord, enough is enough. We're ready to drink from your cup. We're ready, oh Lord, fill us up. We're ready, Lord, won't 
precious in the rain. We need the rain. Lord, send your fire. We need the fire. Send the wind. We need the wind. Oh, Lord, send, send your, your Holy Ghost in power. Send the rain. We need the rain. Lord, send your fire. We need the fire. Send your Holy Ghost in power And I'm tired of the same old thing Tradition wearing out your name I'm tired of a man-made worship hour I'm tired I'm tired of songs that have no praise Where worshiping you just seems out of place I'm tired of religious formalities I'm tired Won't you send the rain We need the rain, Lord Lord, send your fire We need the fire Send the wind We need the wind, Lord Send your Holy Ghost in power Send the rain We need the rain, Lord send your fire We need the fire Send the wind Send your Holy Ghost in I believe they picked the right song to start off camp meeting, didn't they? Oh, yes. I believe God's going to do great and mighty things in this house tonight. You may be seated if you can. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Appreciate all of your support, all of our visitors, our guests tonight. If I begin to name all of you, I'd miss somebody and you get mad at me. So thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate you being here. do want to recognize our pastors, Brother and Sister Thorpe from Rayford, always faithful to support camp meeting. Glad to see them with us. My dad, good to see him. And uh, Brother Allen and his sister Allen with us tonight. We've come all the way from San Mateo, Palaka area, so we're glad to have them with us this evening. And uh, just so thankful for the Lord, thankful for his blessings that he has given us. He's been good to us. And I'm just excited about camp meeting our theme for two years now has been restoration and this year we just added to it restoration continues last year we talked about restoring the gospel this year we've been focused on restoring the message of pentecost and that's the theme for our camp meeting as well this year restoration continues and we're just looking forward we didn't just set a time on the calendar and say lord we need you to show up that week but we've been doing everything that we know to do praying fasting preparing breaking up that fallow ground and i just believe that god is going to do something you see this envelope here on our podium uh, here a few weeks ago we had some blankets set out on the floor one over here one over here one for south Hip folks for salvation one for healing we had one in the middle for those that were here and they gathered on that preached the message entitled born of four and so we took all of those and we took the four corners of those blankets and we prayed for them in that service but we took them and placed them in this envelope and over the last several services leading up to camp meeting we've had four people grabbing the corners of this envelope and we've been praying that same prayer so we've got lost loved ones we've got folks that's been battling uh, sickness COVID cancer diabetes anything you can think of this envelope is full of them and I imagine in the hearts and the lives of visitors here tonight there's some more that could be added to that and I believe in God for restoration in all of those situations and we I believe that God is big enough I told the church uh, here several services ago we have to have an expectation that God can heal every one of them save every one of them if not close the doors turn out the lights and just call it quits if we don't believe that I still believe God I still take him at his word, amen, and believe that he's faithful to do that. So we're expecting great things this week, expecting God to do great and mighty things. And I hope you came with that expectation this evening of what God will do for you in your heart and life. Thank you for supporting Camp Meeting. I want our ushers to come tonight, if Brooke and Ashley uh, can, uh, Brooke and, yeah, Ashley's fine. Come and help me tonight. I didn't realize, didn't even see if Ashley was here tonight. I meant to say Brooke and Gracie, but Ashley's here, so she can help me tonight. Let's uh, give as given unto the Lord and uh, support camp meeting. Just offset the expense of camp meeting. Whatever you can give is greatly appreciated. Father, we're grateful to you for the privilege that we have to give tonight. Thankful for our speakers, thankful for our singers, thankful for all of those that make this week possible. And I'm thankful for our guests tonight. I pray that you'd bless them. And I ask you, Father God, just to bless the offering, the gift and the giver alike. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give tonight.
many is thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I feel His presence here tonight. Let's just get in here and worship the Lord and give Him all that we can. Amen. And uh, I didn't come to, to, like Brother Jamie said, didn't come to be seen, didn't come to just fellowship as much as I love the fellowship. I just come to worship Him and give Him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Worship with us tonight. This life is a journey we walk by faith. And there will always be mountains in our way. But right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed as we recall what God has done and how we've seen Him move. And if there's anybody here who's found Him faithful, anybody here who knows He's able, just say Amen. And if there's anybody here who's seen His power, anybody here brought through the fire, Say amen. Will anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow? Will peace in the storm hope for tomorrow? And you've seen it time and time again. Just say amen. And if there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here. Knows he's able to say amen. Oh, and if there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, just say amen. Will anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow? Will peace in the storm hope for tomorrow? And you've seen it time and time again. Just say amen. Well, sometimes through the darkness, it's hard to see. So just be brave and follow where he leads. Oh, cause greater is the one who's in us than he who's in that world. So child of God, remember that battle is the Lord's. And if there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, oh, just say amen. Oh, and if there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, just say amen. Will anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow? Will peace in the storm hope for tomorrow? And you've seen it time and time again. Just say amen. Well, sometimes through the darkness, it's hard to see. So just be brave and follow where he leads. Oh, cause greater is the one who's in us than he who's in that world. So child of God, remember the battle is the Lord's. And if there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows He's able, come on, just just say amen. And if there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, just just say amen. Will anybody here found joy in the midst? 
midst of sorrow will peace in the storm hope for tomorrow and you've seen it time and time again just say amen be so hard just to lift up my hands well liberty was something I just didn't understand circumstances only God knew about but I left them at the altar now I can say without a doubt I'm free Worship, free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all He's done for me, I've got so much to praise Him for. All the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. Free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord After all He's done for me I've got so much to praise Him for All the chains that had me bound Will never hold me anymore I'm free to worship Free to worship the Lord it used to be so hard just to lift up my hands Well, liberty was something I just didn't understand I was bound by circumstances only God knew about But I left them at the altar Now I can say without a doubt I'm free Worship, free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all He's done for me, I've got so much to praise Him for. All the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. That I've been through in my life And you don't know the many times That God has touched my mind All the things that used to bind me Well, they're laying at my feet So if you don't want to praise Him Well, please don't hinder me Cause I'm free to worship Free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all He's done for me, I've got so much to praise Him for. All the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. Oh, I'm free to worship. Free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all He's done for me, I've got so much to praise Him for. All the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. So many things that I've been through.
through in my life and you don't know the many times that God has touched my mind all the things that used to bind me well they're laying at my feet so if you don't want to praise him well please don't hinder me cause I'm free to worship free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord after all he's done for me I've got so much to praise him for all the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore I'm free to worship free to worship the Lord Amen where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Amen to be able to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords you may be seated if you'd like I want to take a few moments to to introduce our ministry team this week Brother Jake and Sister Sierra Thornton, Pastor Jake, Sister Sierra Thornton from Welcome Congregational Holiness Church is doing our music in the evening. My son Noah is doing our music in the day services. He just found that out this past weekend, and so he's doing it in the mornings. And uh, Pastor Brian Whitley, Sister Tammy, Sister Nellie is with us for the day service. Pastor Brian started us off, kicked us off this morning, wonderful message. And then Brother Elijah Higginbotham. Evangelist, Reverend Elijah Higginbotham, doing our night services this year. He slipped up to me and said, can I switch back to days? I'm nervous. But we're glad to have him. Brother Elijah has been a part of every one of our camp meetings, either doing music, preaching day services, preaching night services, whatever I've asked him to do. He came and, and uh, did partial one of our camp meetings because he broke his foot, his leg or something. And had to prop it up on the piano bench, but still came and, and ministered some that week. And uh, Brother Dristin and Sister Hannah stepped in that week as well. But I met these two young men back in 2015. I came back from Oklahoma 2013 and, or 2012 and came here in 2013. 2015, we took our kids to PYFC Youth Camp. Walked into the dorm that first day. And I had these two guys in there with me, along with about ten others. And what a blessing it was. What a wonderful, wonderful week it was to, to get to know these two young guys. Such a heart and such a passion. Uh, they called Brother Elijah three-peat. He just kept throwing out scriptures. He just wanted year after year. That's just the love for the Word of God, just pouring it out. And I just used them. They, I had uh, Elijah, I had Brother Jake. I had another minister there in our group, young minister. And uh, had uh, Brother Roger Bowman. That's the pastor now at 103rd. He was my co-counselor that year. And these young men just stepped in and did devotionals. Just, just fell in love with these guys there. And uh, after, after PYFC, we've just uh, kept in contact. They've preached for us several times uh, since then. So we're glad to have them with us. Got to go on a mission trip with Pastor Brian and Nellie to the Philippines here a couple years ago. So just in these recent years, just in the last few years, God has given me these contacts of such wonderful people. Aren't you thankful for the family of God? As I look across this congregation, I see many that God has, has blessed us to get to know just in the last few years. This is our eighth and eight and a half years. Yesterday was our ninth pastor appreciation here. And Brother Elijah did a wonderful job, by the way, of preaching that. But just in this eight and a half years, the relationships that we've been able to cultivate in this area and to see what is pouring into these services. I can guarantee you can feel it in the atmosphere that prayer, prayer. This, this couple has been praying about this music. You can already tell. When Pastor Brian took this mic to preach this morning, you could tell he'd been praying for this meeting. And I know when Elijah took that microphone yesterday and began to sing and preach, he's been praying about this meeting. What more could you ask for? So I'm looking forward to what God has got for us this week. So come and be with us if you can in our services at 1030 in the mornings, 7 o'clock each night. If you can't be with us, if Facebook gets back up, it's been down all day, I understand. But if it gets back up, they'll pop up there on our Facebook page, a link for our services when we go live. Uh, you're not going to see any faces. It's web radio, uh, Spreaker web radio. You can listen in to our services. 
And we typically just air the preaching, but we're airing the whole service for camp meeting, uh, AM service. Maybe you can take your lunch break, or maybe you work a job where you can just put the earbuds in and listen into service. Do that. They're archived if you want to go back and listen later. But be a part of camp meeting, whether you can be in here in person or listen in. And I believe God's going to bless and move in hearts and lives this week. Want Brother Elijah to come this evening, just obey the Lord. Whatever God's placed upon his heart tonight, I want to hear it. Don't you? Amen. Amen. the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord? Thank God. Thank God. I've already enjoyed myself. Amen. Just within this morning service and I believe in God's going to do great things this week. I just have that expectancy within my heart. Just worship the Lord with me. Most of us in this house, we can probably think back over a time or We've got our reasons why we worship the way we worship. We've got our reasons the way we love the Lord, the way we love the Lord. Just worship the Lord with me. So many reasons why I love the Lord. So the Lord. I have my reasons, church. I've got so many reasons I can't count them. Hallelujah. Just that one part of that verse says one reason is he changed my life completely. Gave me hope for tomorrow. My Lord, I'm thankful for that today. I appreciate this opportunity to be in the Lord's house this 
this chance that I have, I am, I, I said it Sunday, Sunday morning, I was humbled at the invitation to preach a pastor appreciation service, but I am also thankful for this opportunity to be back again at camp meeting. I always enjoy being a part of camp meeting, whether I, normally I'm doing what Jake and Sierra are doing, and that suits me just fine. But uh, if he, when he asked me to uh, preach, I was like, well, yeah, I'll do it. Thank the Lord and by the help of the Lord. And then he said, would you mind doing the night services? And if he thought I was just getting nervous now, I was really nervous when he asked me. I said, man, I'm not qualified, but... Uh, God knows what we have need of. And I put my trust in the Lord. And I believe God is going to meet with us every morning, every evening. I believe God is going to touch his people. Hallelujah. So why don't we just get in and let God do what he wants to do in our hearts tonight. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, turn me to the book of Nehemiah, chapter number 9. I do want to say it is a privilege to get the team up with the Whitley family this week. I, I'm looking forward to ministering alongside them. And I, I, I got to know a little bit of the Whitley girls. I, I rode with, I believe it was Douglas to a camp one year. And so uh, they probably thought I was a, a, a weird kid, but praise God. <laughs> I get a lot of looks like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nehemiah chapter number nine. Praise God. Nehemiah chapter number nine. Start in verse number six. Hallelujah. Did you come to not wanting a touch from God? I came to not wanting a touch from the Lord. Nehemiah chapter nine, verse number six. Word of God reads, it says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art the Lord, the God, who didst choose Abram and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gavest him the name of Abraham. I like this. And foundest his heart faithful before thee and made us a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, the, and the Girgashites, to give it, I say to his seed, listen now, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous. Aren't you glad we serve a God that keeps his word? Hallelujah. Verse 9, he said, And did see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heard us their cry by the Red Sea, and shoot uh, signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name, as it is this day. Back up to verse number 8. Out of that first part, that first line, right there in verse number eight says and foundest his heart faithful before thee if the Lord will help me tonight I want to preach just a simple thought on this uh, uh, Monday night of camp meeting being found faithful being found faithful. Could you stretch your hands toward heaven and ask the Lord to, to help us in this service dear heavenly father thank you precious Lord God, feel this place with your presence. Feel this place, God, with thy power and thy glory. Lord God, I'm thankful for what I've already felt here in this place today, God. I'm thankful for what I've already felt in this service tonight, God. I'm excited about camp meeting, God. I'm excited about this time that you have given us to gather together in this sanctuary. Thankful for how you helped us this morning. Thankful for how you worked in this service today already. God, do it again tonight. Have your way in this house again tonight, God. Touch hearts, touch souls, touch the minds of everybody here in this sanctuary tonight, God. Breathe the breath of life upon us and let that Holy Ghost fire fall in this service. We'll be careful to give you the glory, all the praise and the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. And the church says amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. We, we can go back 
to the last two chapters of the book of 2 Kings. And we can read where Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had came against Jerusalem three different times and three different appointments. And he went and he brought back treasures from the temple. And a time he captured men and carried them back to Babylon as hostages and, and slaves. And the final time he invaded Jerusalem, he destroyed the temple, destroyed the city along with the walls of Jerusalem, left it decimated. This was God's place. This is where God chose to place his name. Hallelujah. Has said then we can go forward on in the Bible and we can look at Ezra and read where restoration and, and restitution began. Hallelujah. Exiled Israelites returned to Jerusalem and the temple was rebuilt and dedicated back to God. And through Ezra, a restoration took place not only about the temple and the house of God, but within the hearts of the men and women and the hearts of the people who, hallelujah, after they prayed, it said they made confession unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we find about a man named Nehemiah who came to Jerusalem and started inspecting the city, inspected the walls and found the walls still in ashes and found the walls still in crumbles and his heart broke within him. Hallelujah. And so he went back to Jerusalem and started the rebuilding of the walls. Listen to me, church, Despite all the adversity, despite all the hindrances that tried to stop them from completing God's task, they did not give up. I said they did not give up, but they worked until it was finished. If they had to hold a tool in one hand and a sword in the other, they worked until the building was completed. Hallelujah. It says then we find we're on the 24th day of the month after the walls was rebuilt. The children of Israel had assembled themselves with fasting, with sackcloth, sanctified themselves, separated themselves. I said there was a day of praying. It was a day of fasting. It was a day of repenting. Come on now. It was a day of getting back where they ought to be with God. They stood in their place and it says one fourth part of the day. They read the book of the law and another, they spent another the fourth part of the day confessing and worshiping I said one fourth of the day they read the words they read the law they read the book and said we'll spend another fourth of the day on our knees crying out to God praying to the Lord I said this gospel will take you to your knees it'll either draw you closer to the Lord it'll uplift you in the faith it'll encourage you in the journey I said the word of God will help his people Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for the word of God? I said they've spent years trying to get rid of it. But thank God it's still here. I said it's still here. It's still relevant. It's still powerful in this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Says the Levites on behalf of the children of Israel. They stood up. They offered a prayer of praise and a petition to appeal for the grace of God. You can go on further and read about how God moved, how God worked, how the, uh, their fathers of old, uh, how they rebelled and hardened their necks and did not hearken to the commandments uh, and just prayed that they would not fall into the same place, uh, appealed for the grace of God to work in their life. And within that prayer, it is mentioned that God chose Abraham and brought him forth out of the land of Ur. We know that God made a covenant with Abraham to give his seed the land of Canaan, the promised land. We know the covenant. We know that God, and the Bible said God performed his words. I said if God's given you a promise, you can stand upon it. If God's given you a promise, you can lean upon it. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we serve a God? And when he says something, he'll do it. I said his promises are yea and in him amen. However, it was said that Abraham had a faithful heart. The word of God let us know that God found Abraham's heart faithful before him. The word faithful means to remain loyal, 
steadfast, remaining true, constant. Hallelujah. It looks to me that Abraham had a heart that remained loyal to God. Abraham must have had a heart that was true and constant to God's word. Abraham had a heart that was steadfast in serving the Lord. And when the Lord looks down on brother Elijah, I want him to find a heart that's faithful in the ways of God. I want him to find a heart that's faithful in the service of the kingdom of God. What does God see when he looks down upon this generation? What does God see when he looks upon the church of 2021? Let him find somebody that's remained loyal. Let him find somebody that's still true to the ways of God. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Let it be said of you, he's a faithful servant. Let it be said of you, he's a faithful warrior. Let it be said of you, he's a faithful member. A faithful member in the faith. Oh, help me tonight, Holy Ghost. The prayer of the people should be, Lord, let my heart have the same condition. Oh, let my heart have the same condition. Hallelujah. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but I feel like going in this direction. Let me be found with a heart faithful to God. Hallelujah. I said, let me be found with a heart faithful to God. It was said of King Hezekiah that he was 25 years old when he began to reign as king of Judah. The Bible also mentions that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He went and removed the high places, broke down the images, cut down the groves. He even destroyed the brazen serpent Moses had made because the foolish people had made it a God to themselves and they was burning incense to that brazen serpent. I said Hezekiah stood up for the right ways of God and was getting rid of everything. Hallelujah that was destroying their relationship with God Almighty. But the Bible goes even further when it's describing King Hezekiah. It said and mentions that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord God of Israel and it said there was not a king after him nor a king like him that was before him out of all the kings of Judah why because he clave to the Lord and departed not from following the Lord Oh, let me say that again. He clave to the Lord and departed not from following him. Clave being the past tense of the word cleave. It means to adhere firmly or adhere closely, loyally or unwavering, unwaveringly to cling to. Hallelujah. In other words, Hezekiah was faithful. I said, in other words, Hezekiah was faithful. Hezekiah clung to the Lord faithfully. Hallelujah. Hezekiah followed the Lord faithfully. Hallelujah. We're living in a time. Oh, let me just go on over there. I'll get to it in a minute. We're living in an age where faithfulness is a lost art. Come on now, somebody. I said, we're living in an age where faithfulness is a lost art. With a rise of ungodliness and a steady rise of deception in these dark last days it has caused the number of faithful hearts to plummet I said come on now somebody but I'm preaching to somebody that will rise up despite the deception despite the worldliness they'll stand faithful to God They'll stand in the law. They'll stand on his word. And if they'll get rid of it, let them get rid of it. But I think I'll cling to the ways of God, the holiness, the righteousness. Where do you read that? Well, David cried 
in the book of Psalm, chapter number 12. He said, help, oh Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Oh, Holy Ghost. He said, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight, saints? Hallelujah, David must have looked around and felt the rise of an ungodly climate. He must have looked around and felt the rise of a wicked and perverse atmosphere. I often wonder, did David look ahead and look at our generation? I know we're living in perilous times. I know we're living in the last days. And we're on the verge of the church being called away and called out of this world to meet their reward in heaven. But he looked and said, we're living in an age where the faithful are failing. The faithful are failing. I can't find any more faithful among the children of men. Let him look at Middleburg. That's a faithful church. Let him look at our churches and say that's a faithful church. With the rise of deception, they're still teaching the truth. With the rise of deception, they're still believing the truth. That's anybody beside the preacher tonight. Won't God to count him as a faithful servant in the gospel of faith. I want to be faithful. I said, I want to be faithful. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. My, 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 hallelujah. Let me be faithful. Let me be faithful in prayer. Let me be faithful in watching. Let me be faithful in reading the word. Let me be faithful in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Let me be faithful. Listen to me, saints. There is no way for me to get up here and should be able to doubt the faithfulness of God. You cannot be a scholar of the Bible and doubt God's faithfulness. I said you cannot flip through the pages and read the facts and read the stories of God's people and tell me that God's not a faithful God. You cannot do it. But what I'm wondering, I said what about our faithfulness? God is faithful, but what about us? What about me? God will never waver from being a faithful God. Thank God he's on the throne. Thank God that's who I pray to. Does anybody hear what I'm saying tonight? But what about us? I want to be faithful to the Lord. I want to be faithful to my God, my King. Why should I cease? Why should I stop from being faithful to Him? He's never done me wrong. He's never turned me away. He's never left me hanging. He's been faithful. So let me be faithful. Faithful. Faithful in my attendance. Faithful in my Bible reading. Faithful in my prayer time. <laughs> Faithful to God's word. Hallelujah. I said I don't want to be caught one day in and one day out. My God, I want to stay the same Christian as I was the day God saved me. Don't depart from following the Lord. There's been many that's left and turned around. But God's looking for somebody that'll remain loyal and faithful. A faithful member of faith. Hallelujah. No matter what takes place across our country, across our land, can I just preach about me tonight? Elijah, 
no matter what takes place across this nation, Elijah wants to be found faithful. God looked down at that man he chose and found him with a faithful heart. How many people's got faithful hearts? Come on now. I don't care what takes place in the White House, on the news boards, I don't care. Jesus said we were gonna have to walk through some dark times leading up to his return. My friend, it's not gonna get any better out there in the world, but I found clinging close to God, it gets sweeter every day. It gets sweeter every day. I got my reasons why I love the Lord and I want to cling close to him. Elijah wants to be found faithful in his walk. Faithful in my walk. Anybody else want to be found faithful? My God found faithful. Let God look down upon us. Hallelujah. It's been 30 years for so and so. It's been 40 years for so and so. And they're still walking tall. And they're still walking strong. My God, I tell you, I remember the night in August of 2012 when I buried my face in my mattress and I surrendered my life into the hands of God. I want him to look at me nine years later. I said nine years later and say he's still holding my hand. He's still walking the straight and narrow. He's still faithful. He's still faithful. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God, my God, my God. They face some hardships, but he's still faithful. My God, they walk through some dark days, but they're still faithful. I said they traveled a long journey with ups and downs, but they're still faithful. They've never wavered. They've never wavered. Faithful on the mountain. Faithful in the valley. Faithful when the skies is blue. Faithful when the storms arise. Faithful to the Lord. It was said Moses was faithful in all his house. Anybody hear what I'm saying? If you're the only one in your family that's serving God, you can be faithful. If you're the only one in your neighborhood, if you're the only family, maybe I'll say it like that, in your neighborhood, I said you can remain faithful. My God, I'm not saying things. It's not going to come at us. But when we make up in our mind, no matter what comes, I'm going to stay true to the Lord. God will work in our lives. God's been faithful. I should strive to be that faithful servant whom when his Lord cometh, faithful to the watch, if he shall come in the second or in the third watch, blessed is that servant that's found watching. Faithful to the watch. It was told to the church of Smyrna. I'm trying to hurry up tonight. It was told to the church of Smyrna. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Woo! I said, glory to God. He said, remain faithful until your dying day. When they lay you in the grave, let it be said he was a faithful man. 
when they throw the dirt over your body. And trust me, it's appointed unto man wants to die. If God's timing is for you to leave this world before he returns, and when they lay you in the grave, let it be said over your soul, my God, Brother Larry, he had a faithful heart. Brother Jacob had a faithful heart. Brother Jamie had a faithful heart. He let them know. He said, there's going to come times men's going to persecute you. He said, there's going to be times they might even throw you in jail for the faith. Now, He said, there's going, you're going to face things. Be thou faithful unto death. I read those, those, those letters, I guess, across, and y'all probably read them as well as I have, when Taliban invaded Afghanistan and those missionaries over there and them people that served the true God over there hiding in caves escaped the caves and, but I read what they said they're searching for us they're looking for us they're either going to try to convert us or they're going to kill us but I read in those letters, we're all gathered in these caves and we're praying. We're singing. We're worshiping. Knowing there's an enemy searching for their lives and yet they're still having to. I said they're still having their remaining faithful even if it takes their life. There is a reward for the faithful. There is a heavenly blessing for the faithful heart. Let it be said of us, those were faithful men and women that held on till their dying day. They endured to the end. They stood on my word until I returned to call my church away. He said, the faithful are failing and the ungodly man ceaseth. But you can be among the few. You can be among that number. That in spite of all what's going around, I'm still walking and talking with Christ. Listen to me, my friend. We've come way too far to turn around and walk away now. God's brought us too far along this way to let go of his unchanging hand. My God, I'm so thankful I serve a God that'll never lose his grip. I said he'll never lose his power to hold on to me. My part is to remain loyal and hold to his hand. Hold to the hand of God and watch him lead us through this barren land, through this vast wilderness and lead us all the way to glory. Remain faithful to his word. Remain faithful to his gospel. Remain faithful to his will. Remain faithful to his kingdom. And if everybody else wants to get rid of it, you remain faithful. You be found faithful. Stand with me across this house. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. That's been so wonderful all day today, God. Thank you for once again meeting with us in this sanctuary. God, I preached what I felt like you wanted me to preach tonight. 
God, I pray that it's ministered to some soul. I pray it's ministered to some heart. I pray that somebody was sitting in these pews that needed that encouragement, that needed that exhortation to remain faithful and loyal to their Savior, their God, and their King. Hallelujah. Now, God, as we come, these altars are open. And people that are stepping out to find Him a place to pray, minister to them tonight. I pray that before we leave this house, we'll all have the strength to press on and remain loyal and faithful to God. Who would like to find Him a place to pray? Lord, let me be found faithful. Let me be found faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, if there's anything in my soul, if there's anything in me, if there's anything in my heart that's caused me and caused a hindrance in my walk, God, let me remove it tonight. Let me get rid of it tonight. Let me be a faithful servant to the Master. Faithful to the Lord. Sing whenever you're ready. Hallelujah. Question. Certain, certain.